Hello everyone, in this video we're going to be evaluating an interesting infinite sum with factorials. Actually, it's the reciprocals of factorials. So we have 1 plus 1 over 2 factorial plus 1 over 4 factorial plus 1 over 6 factorial, so on and so forth, all the way to infinity, so that every denominator is an even number factorial. So the first one is written as 1, but it means 1 over 0 factorial, as you should probably know, 0 factorial equals 1. Anyways, so we're going to be talking about two methods here. I'll be presenting two methods. Let's start with the first one. So if you've seen any factorial sums or sums with factorials, you'll probably recognize Euler's number, right? Which is e to the power x, or in general e. e to the power x is the exponential function, which has Euler's number as its base. Anyway, so we can write functions besides polynomials as infinite polynomials, and that's called Taylor series. And e to the power x can be written as follows. Let me just give it to you real quick. 1 plus x plus x squared divided by 2 factorial plus x cubed divided by 3 factorial plus dot dot dot. You could also write this with the sigma x to the power n uh, divided by n factorial such that n is 0 to infinity. Okay? Anyways, but how do you prove this? Let's not get into the proof, but let me just tell you how you can do it. And I believe we've done this in another video. If I can find that video, I'll try to link it. But if you set f of x equal to e to the power x, and then just think about writing it as an infinite polynomial, such as a sub 0 plus a sub 1x plus a sub 2x squared plus a sub 3x cubed, and then so on and so forth. And then you, you're going to differentiate this function a few times. Every time you're going to get e to the x, but on the right-hand side, since we have an infinite polynomial, the, you know, the derivative is going to be a little different, even though it's the same thing. Anyways, the derivative of a sub 0 is 0 because it's a constant, and then this is going to become a sub 1, this is going to be 2a sub 2x, and it's going to be 3a sub 3x squared, and so on and so forth. And then we're going to differentiate it again, so on and so forth. So after all these derivatives or differentials, you're going to replace x with 0. So you're going to evaluate f of 0, f prime at 0, f double prime at 0, so on and so forth. And then set it equal to uh, the, each other. And then from there, you're going to be able to evaluate a sub 0, a sub 1. And you're going to realize that a sub 0 is 1, a sub 1 is 1, a sub 2 is 1 over 2 factorial, so on and so forth. So that a sub k is always 1 over k factorial. Make sense? That's what's going to happen. To keep a long story short, we have the following. e to the x equals 1 plus x plus x squared divided by 2 factorial plus a x cubed over 3 factorial plus x to the fourth over 4 factorial, so on and so forth. Now, I want to get the sum of the reciprocals of even factorials. So, I need to get rid of some terms, right? What are they? I need to get rid of this. I need to get rid of this, and so on and so forth. But how do you achieve that, right? Well, here's the thing. You can always negate those terms because of the odd powers. So let's go ahead and replace x with negative x on both sides. That's going to give us the following. 1 minus x right, because x is being replaced with negative x, plus negative x squared is the same as x squared, so it's not going to change. And then the x cubed, if you, x, uh, if you cube negative x, you're going to get the opposite of x cubed, which is going to give you a minus sign, so on and so forth. So you're basically going to get all the odd factorials with a minus sign, right? And of course, the next one is odd too. And then here's what we want. We want to get rid of the odds, so let's go ahead and add these up. Okay, that's just going to give us another Taylor expansion or Taylor series, which is for e to the x plus e to the negative x. And of course, that's going to be 1 plus 1. These terms are going to cancel out. These terms are going to cancel out. All the odds are going to cancel out. We're going to end up with 2 plus 2 times x squared over 2 factorial. Don't, you know, simplify that yet. 2 times x to the fourth over 4 factorial, so on and so forth. Notice that we can take out a 2 right? 
And when we do, we're going to get 1 plus x squared over 2 factorial plus x to the fourth over 4 factorial, dot, dot, dot. Now, here's what we want. We want to divide both sides by 2 because that's going to give us, uh, that's going to bring us even closer to the sum that we're trying to evaluate. And notice that our sum is just 1 plus 1 over 2 factorial plus 1 over 4 factorial plus 1 over 6 factorial, so on and so forth. So all we have to do is replace x with 1 and we're good to go. Make sense? So we're going to go ahead and replace x with 1 on both sides. And then it's going to be e plus e to the negative 1 or just we can write it as 1 over e, I guess. Divided by 2 equals 1 plus 1 over 2 factorial plus 1 over 4 factorial plus 1 over 6 factorial, blah, blah, blah. That's what we want. And so this is the answer. And if you simplify it, you're going to get e squared plus 1 divided by 2e as our answer. Make sense? Okay, great. Let's go ahead and talk about the second method. Now, obviously, the second method is a little different. They are, they are related, but it kind of uses a different idea. And of course, we're going to take advantage of Taylor expansions or Taylor series again. So consider the series for cosine. That is 1 minus x squared over 2 factorial plus x to the fourth over 4 factorial minus x to the 6 over 6 factorial plus dot dot dot. It's kind of like an alternating series. The signs will alternate. And remember, we're looking for this, right? So we actually don't want any negatives. So the million dollar question is, can we fix the negatives? And the answer is, of course. That's what math is for, right? To fix all the problems. So here's what we can do. We can go ahead and replace x with something that is almost magical, or maybe I should say mathematical, so that every negative turns into a positive. So here's what you need to consider. Note that i squared is negative 1, and i to the fourth power is positive 1. In general, i to the power 4n is 1, and i to the power 4n plus 2 is negative 1 if n is an integer, a positive integer, I think, right? Or a non-negative integer. Anyways, this is nice because we can just plug in i. So cosine i is going to be, remember the expression for cosine? Let me just copy that here so you get to see what I'm doing again. This is the cosine. And then if you go ahead and replace x with i, this is cosine of x, you're going to get 1 minus i squared over 2 factorial plus i to the 4th over 4 factorial minus i to the 6 over 6 factorial. And yes, the math and magic happens. And i squared is negative 1, so you get 1 plus 1 over 2 factorial plus 1 over 4 factorial plus 1 over 6 factorial and so on and so forth. And that's what you want. But what is cosine i? I think we've done that in another video too. Again, if I remember, I'll try to link it. But to keep a long story short, I think we also talked about it at the other channel, which I barely started recently, I should say. If you didn't check it out, go ahead and check it out. It's called a plus bi. Okay, it's all about complex numbers. Anyways, this is cosine of x. And if you replace x with i, you get e to the i squared plus e to the negative i squared divided by 2. But i squared is negative 1. Remember that. 1 over e plus e over 2. And that is e squared plus 1 over 2. But our answer was just cosine of i. Therefore, this sum is equal to a e squared plus 1 divided by 2e. You didn't see that, right? And this brings, us, this brings us to the end of this video. Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. Please let me know. Don't forget to comment, like, and subscribe. I'll see you next time with another video. Until then, be safe, take care, and bye-bye.